Ethan with Nerdette's newsstand, and I want to talk about something huge, like huge. I cannot believe this happened today. Now, I probably will talk about this in more detail once we find out more, and of course, this thing came up, I will keep you up to date, but this is massive and kind of freaking awesome. Anyway, so Dan Didio is no longer publisher of DC Comics as of today. Now, I actually did not expect this to maybe ever happen. I thought maybe, um, you know, he'd drive it all the way into the ground. But I am happy to see this because if you notice um, and you've been keeping up with my reviews, a lot of them I'm like, this has been really good. This has been really good. Comics have been really good lately and then I'm looking towards the future and I'm getting a little worried. Don't get me wrong, I, I am into the idea of the generations. I really am. But you can only change so much before you lose people. And even someone as hopeful and optimistic as me eventually loses hope. And we've seen Dan Didio ruin a lot of things when it comes to DC. Now we've seen, oh my god, so as far as 5G goes, which, um, you know what, I do still think they're going to push forward with that. Now, I could be wrong. Of course, all of this is speculation. The only part that's actually true is Dan Didio is gone. So as far as my speculation goes, I do think that we're going to see a change as far as the Brian Michael Bendis stuff. Like, there are not a lot of people that has gone over with well. Not a lot of people out all. And I I mean, I stopped reading Superman. I know a lot of people that stopped reading Superman. The aging, the different stuff he has done has all been greenlit through Dan Didio. They are, you know, close. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just a little bit too excited. So let's take a look at this article quickly. And then I want to talk about two really weird tweets. So um, it says whether he quit, fired, or was pushed out we don't yet know. We may never know. Except for this afternoon, he was still posting stuff about DC Comics, or early afternoon, rather, um, on Facebook. So, whatever happened, happened very quickly. Like, well, way too quickly. I, mm, mm, I'm still speechless. But Bleeding Cool can confirm that Dan Didio, publisher of DC Comics, is no longer publisher of DC Comics. Aw, oh, don't let the door hit ya. He is gone from the company as of today. Whatever happened, happened fast. That's what I mean. Like, he went into work today thinking he had a job. He left work. He, he dipped. What? Like, I don't know. I kind of, I, I hate to love it. I don't like to, like, um, cope or, you know, dwell in people's misery. But, God, this is maybe what DC Comics needed. Now, um... Bleeding Cool has confirmed with a number of sources, inside and outside, as of DC, that he is gone. Rumor has happened um, from high up in Warner's, <laughs> and it was a result of a high staff turnover. So, I'm thinking high up in DC Comics and Warner Brothers, I'm thinking Jeff Johns. We know they have a history. Then again, again, theory. <laughs> There's lots of theories, I'm sure, going around at this point. That's just what I personally think, like... Dan Didio stepped on a lot of toes. He ruined a lot of good characters. Like, Wally West, there's so many good characters that people, you know, were attached to and that you ruined and that you put a sour taste in their mouth. Like, after a while, it kind of comes back. And with the late issues, with um, the editorial and publishing issues, like, come on, dude. What did you expect? Did you expect to be able to run on thin air for the entirety of the, your career? But... Nothing right now it is more than just rumor. So his departure um, has been reported a number of times in the past. Yippity yeah, we yeah, that's okay. So um, he's been there for what since 2002. So yeah, 18 years. Um, it looks like as of right now. So Jim Lee is also a publisher at five or at DC Comics. So it looks like for the months ahead, he will be on lead. Um, and I actually like that. And there's a huge difference, in my opinion at least, when it comes to A, Jim Lee, and B, Dan Didio. So you take a person like Jim Lee. He is a pacifistic. He cares about the story and the characters. And then you switch over to Dan Didio, and he's very political. That is a huge, massive problem when it comes to sales. Because you can't limit your audience right out of the gate. 
And that, and he kind of let these people have free reign, right? When it comes to people like Mark Russell or people that ruined, you know, complete lines like Andy Corey. Like you can't let these people do these things and still expect to keep a job for this long. Oh, so the new timeline. I don't know what's going to happen with that. This was completely championed by Dan Didio. Like this whole thing was his idea it was pushed and right now it's kind of up in the air i do think it's kind of too late um if that makes sense so i think um since it's coming out in may they've already got it you know scheduled for free comic book day and then generation one i think comes out may 27th so i do think it might be a little bit too late now heavy metal it could take a different turn we both we know that these are all six issues we've got um, generation zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got six issues of heavy metal. I don't know. Like, uh, I'm really excited to see how this is going to go, but I do think at some point this has needed to happen for way too long. With New 52, like it was good for a while. Don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, uh, you need to get somebody in there that's going to bring stories back. That's going to bring things that happen in comics, not as a joke. Like. You know, when it comes to someone like Alfred, who just died in the comics, how long did you plan on making that last? Like, when these comics happen, they need to actually have some sort of, you know, actual issue with it. They, they need to have some sort of responsibility within it, and it needs to continue. Now, I know a lot of times Dan Didio would say, like, you know, comic books were slooping because people didn't understand the continuity and stuff. No! When you have good books and you have stuff like that, people understand it. People get with it. Um, but when you have, like, Event Leviathan, Year of the Villain, things happening back to back to back to back, people get sick of it. I love DC Comics, and I have gotten sick of Year of the Villain. I skipped Event Leviathan because I just, I, I didn't, I didn't care. It was Bendis Project, and I didn't care at all. So, this is no one's fault but your own, like, I don't know. So the two tweets I want to talk about, they're nothing big, but I'm going to start with Mark Russell. Actually, there's three. I apologize. Um, and this is a perfect example as to why he's out. And, and he, he didn't even mean to make it that way. So he said, um, Dan Didio took big chances in comics because he believed in the importance of innovative storytelling. He let me turn the Flintstones into a dissection of civilization and Snagglepuss into a gay, southern, gothic playwright. He always had my back, and I will forever be grateful. Do you not realize what you're saying here? Like, these are things that people don't want. He let you do those things, and they failed. Like, I, I guess Flintstones was okay, but, mmm, Mark, you can't write. Like, honey, oh, you just can't. So, huh, this is a perfect example as to why he failed. The other really weird one, mm, this could just be a weird feminist girl that I don't understand their language, but a lot of fans seem to be wondering what Dan Didio's departure from DC means for the characters. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be everybody's question. I'm more interested in knowing what it means for women who work or would like to work at the DC office. Like, oh, uh, what? <laughs> I don't get it. Like, are you saying not enough women work there because... Literally, a lot of women get jobs there now under Dan Didio for just having a fucking vagina. So, like, I, I you're you're weird. Anyways, um, a better one. Dan Didio he was holding DC back for years. This is the best outcome. I love Rob Liefeld. He's so savage. Like, I was going to run a story the other day. He talked about Birds of Prey and, you know, about their costumes and how bad they were. And he was, like, attacked for it. Well, of course he was, because he's on Twitter, and Twitter's so stupid. But, um, yeah. Dude just kind of tells it like it is, and it is kind of great. It's kind of refreshing, because most of the time, the people in these, you know, echo chambers just basically do that. They're like, oh, yep, great. What? Da-da-da-da. Yeah, I just, mm, it's so good. It is so fucking good. I love it. The funny thing about Liefeld is, is in 2015, March 10th, 2015, Dan Didio has pictures of everybody, apparently. Uh, nothing else explains his continued presence. Like, yeah, he called it five years ago. So good. No, no, no I'm, I'm not trying to gloat. 
at the fact that he's gone. What I'm excited for is the future because this means finally maybe we can get our publisher back on a good stance, move forward, sales will go up. We already know, like, at least in my opinion, I think there are leagues beyond what Marvel's doing right now. And, oh, wait, let me be the, very clear about this. Okay. They're not going to sell them. <laughs> like, it's, it's just not going to happen. Like, this isn't an outrage community. Come on. Be real. They're too big. So, going forward, we're going to see, hopefully, the return of our heroes. Let's just hope. Maybe, maybe I'm too optimistic, but... I'm really, really happy to see this. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, I want to give a huge shout-out to my Subscribestar and Patreons. You guys literally make this channel possible. Black Knight Fool, Brucey, Chris C, Dave Ross, David L, Jeffrey Allen Carnes, Sanjuro, Jeremy Burtz, Joe Bustify, Kato Round, Magical Exotic Diamonds, Mighty Pauls, Mike Buckner, Robert, Steve Glasker, Timothy French, Alice Matt Films, Alexander Trapp, Way Else One, and Troy Reiser. You guys are absolutely amazing, and I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Don't forget to subscribe and like on the way out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.